So no matter where you are or what you're at or what you're struggling with, the, the grace of God is with you. And the, the life-giving Spirit of God is a, a hair's breadth away from you experiencing. Just accept the wonder of His grace and unconditional love that's revealed in Jesus. Jesus is your righteousness. Believe on Him. Let Him be your Savior. And you will begin to experience the life-giving waters of the Spirit. Humble yourself, whether you're a believer or not. Humble yourself before Him and allow yourself to experience the life-giving Spirit which flows from the rock, which is Christ. He is in all things. He is above all things. He is through all things. He is the light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not been able to comprehend Him or overcome Him. Verse 6 of Ephesians chapter 4. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Stop and reflect for a moment. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And as we read on in the next few verses, we're going to see the extent of the meaning of that. Verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 6. Let's start again in verse 6 and read it again. One God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to man. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended to the very, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Wow. Grace fills all things. God fills all things. As we read in verse 6, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to man. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So he, he who ascended, descended into the lowest hell, into the lowest earthly region, into the lowest point of creation in order to fill the whole universe. Therefore, we can say, one God and Father of all who is over all, who is through all, and is in all. Wow! What astonishing, wonderful grace. What Jesus did when he gave himself on the cross in identification with our sin and tasting death for all humanity, becoming one with broken, fallen humanity and taking, taking broken, fallen, corrupt humanity into death and then rising from the dead. So we 
died in him. But when he was raised from the dead and stepped out of that tomb, out of the grave, we stepped out of the grave with him. He who ascended is the very one who descended into the lower earthly regions, into the bowels of the earth, the underbelly of the earth, Hades. He entered and he ascended in order to fill every region of creation. Grace is a manifest reality in every part of creation. In every crevice, in every corner, God's presence, God's grace has been there, is there, and fills it all. This is why we proclaim the good news. So no matter where you are, you might be at your darkest point. At your lowest point, Jesus is there with you. He fills that point with you, that low point with you. That deep place of darkness that you might find yourself in. He fills that place with his wonderful love and grace. Because he has descended into the lowest regions of you. And he has also ascended in you in order to fill you entirely. In order that God the Father is, let's personalize this. One God and Father of you, who is over all of you, and is through all of you, and is in all of you. You see, Jesus has totally identified with all of you. What was it about when Jesus came into the earth and descended into the lower earthly regions? Was it just to sort of walk around in some cave in the physical earth or some dungeon or some deep part of the ocean or to dig a hole in the ground and walk around. No, it's about human beings. It's about men and women, boys and girls. Humanity, he descended into the lowest parts of Humanity's earth, into the lowest regions, the most depraved parts of us. He descended into it in total identification. But in his resurrection, he, we also were raised with him in life as he ascended. In his ascension, we ascended. And through what he did, he fills us completely. Grace, this is the wonder of the good news, the everlasting gospel, the everlasting good news. The church systems of man, which so often wants to get a little revelation of grace, but then it perverts it and puts a control mechanism around the grace of God in order to control the grace of God, is pitiful. God's grace is so magnificent, so wonderful, so inexpressible. The heavens, the universe cannot contain and express the grace of God. Because grace, God's goodness and grace is so wonderful. It fills all and is a present reality throughout all creation into the lowest regions of creation, into the most depraved parts of humanity, to the highest pinnacle of creation, in order to fill the whole universe, the scripture says. And this is an actual present reality right now. This is something that isn't going to happen when we die. This isn't something that's going to come at some point in the future in some big revival. It's a present reality right now. And what is happening is we are having our eyes, the inner internal, our inner internal eyes, the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our imagination, the eyes of our consciousness, the eyes of our spirit, whatever 
terminology you want to use, we're having the veil pulled aside in order to see where we're located in God, where all humanity is located in God and where we're located in God in reality. We are located in this grace. And as as our eyes are opened, we can believe. See, our faith is not making God do something. Our faith is in something that is actually a present reality. Glory to God. Praise God. An ever-present reality. The substantial grace of God. What is the grace of God? Well, it's God's being, God's nature, God's resources, God's attributes, God himself, the totality of who he is in life and resurrection. Pure life, pure substance, divine substance, the divine substance of God's being fills the entire universe. And as we have the eyes, our internal eyes opened to reality, ultimate reality, which is the only reality. We walk in the most satisfying life you can imagine. We step into wholeness. We step into joy. We step into peace. We step into fullness. We step into the original design of who we really are. We step into our true identity. That is sons of God manifest sons and daughters of God and the spirit has been given to us as the down payment the evidence of this is that we who've experienced the powers of the age to come who've tasted the goodness of the word of God who've experienced the power the wonder working power of the spirit which is evidence that we have the down payment of that which is about to manifest in totality and which is already present, the totality of God's being, the fullness of grace. It's all about God's perspective, brothers and sisters. When Isaiah was caught up into the heavens, he saw the angels, the seraphim that surrounded the throne of God crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. See, from God's perspective, the earth is all full of the glory of God. And if that's God's perspective, that is what is. Now, what is not full with the glory of God, what what is lacking in the earth at the present moment, is the knowledge of that glory which now currently fills the earth. But there is a wonderful promise in the scriptures which says the earth will also be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Currently, the earth is filled with the glory covered and engulfed and filled with the glory of God as the waters covers the sea. That is a present reality. But what is happening right now in relation to that is the earth is being filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters covers the sea. How? Well, through the broadcast and the communication and the media of this wonderful message, grace, that Jesus has taken humanity into death and humanity has now stepped out of the grave. When Jesus stepped out of the grave, humanity stepped out of the grave. And I have accepted this as an individual and I'm starting to walk in the experience of this. And I have the proof of this, which is the down payment of the spirit. The anointing, the seal of the spirit is manifesting in me in pure glory. The river of God is flowing in me manifestly radiating out of me in his light and living water. I'm drinking from that true river, that crystal river of life is flowing in our inner beings and as we proclaim this and broadcast this and project this message the knowledge of the glory of God is projected into creation and we counteract and overcome the lies that come through the false narrative 
which comes from the Adamic man, the fallen, broken, humanity, the Adamic man, which the corporate fallen, broken, humanity, Adamic man, which has already been taken into death and is a current non-entity. You see, we died with Christ and we've been raised with him. Our old self, our old man has already been put away, put away because we have been crucified with him. That's something that happened 2,000 years ago for all. And it is simply an unveiling as we proclaim this glorious message. So no matter where you are or what you're at or what you're struggling with, the, the grace of God is with you. And the, the life-giving Spirit of God is a, a hair's breadth away from you experiencing. Just accept the wonder of His grace and unconditional love that's revealed in Jesus. Jesus is your righteousness. Believe on Him. Let Him be your Savior. And you will begin to experience the life-giving waters of the Spirit. Humble yourself, whether you're a believer or not. Humble yourself before him and allow yourself to experience the life-giving spirit which flows from the rock, which is Christ. He is in all things. He is above all things. He is through all things. He is the light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not been able to comprehend him or overcome him. He is the all-pervading one, the Lord, who's been raised up and we've been raised up with him. And all that's happening now is our eyes are being unveiled to these wonderful realities and this ultimate wonderful reality, which is resurrection life, which is where we are. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Wonder of wonders. Let me read you something as we close. And it's from Romans chapter 5. It's verse 18 and 19. Consequently, just as a result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. Meditate and drink deeply on that. Consequently, just as one trespass, the mass of humanity experienced condemnation. Jesus reversed it, this by his one act of righteousness, which has now justified all humanity and brings life to all humanity, a life-giving acquittal. Verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of the one man, the mass of humanity were made sinners. So also through the obedience of the one man, the mass of humanity are declared righteous. Wow. He has reversed what Adam did. For the mass of humanity, God's righteousness, his justification and his life-giving acquittal is all pervading through the entire world, through the entire universe. And what we're doing is broadcasting this glorious truth and ultimate reality so as people can believe it. We're, we're taking the grave clothes off people, just like Lazarus stepped out of the tomb. When as Lazarus stepped out of the tomb, Jesus said, take the grave clothes off him. As we declare this glorious message, we're taking the grave clothes off humanity and revealing to humanity their true identity in Christ, the resurrection man. And that they are now resurrection men and women because when Jesus stepped out of the tomb, we all stepped out of the tomb with him in that pure resurrection life and we're in him his resurrection body is our true body glory to god
And guys, as I finish up today, I finish with giving you an opportunity to partner with me as I proclaim this glorious message of the grace of God. You can partner with me by going to the PayPal link or whatever link you will find in the description, giving you an opportunity to give. And as you give, your money is converted into the currency of grace, which touches real people with the grace of God. Money is a currency and an expression of your time and energy in the earth. So if you give to a ministry which promotes and radiates grace, and that money is used to take this message, for example, get on a train, or get in a car, or get in a taxi, or buy a camera. As that money is used to touch people with grace, that money becomes grace. And you, your energy and your time has literally touched someone with the grace of God. Even if you're not physically doing it yourself, but because your money is used in this way, you are the one who, are who is touching that person with the grace of God because your money is converted into grace. And what a person sows in this context, they reap. We're sowing to please the Spirit. We're flowing out of the Spirit. We're giving out of the wellspring of resources, those unlimited resources that exist within us. The glorious grace of God. So thank you for listening, guys. You see the links in the description. And meditate on the reality of the vastness of God's grace and what he's done. It's truly wonderful and magnificent.